Hi everyone, my name is Mr Ward and I'm going to take you on a whirlwind tour through biology. I'm only going to give you a framework though, so remember to check your book for details. Now, we're going to touch on DNA and cloning today, possibly a little bit of evolution, but how about the big picture? Well, here's any old human being. I've chosen the queen and uh, we're going to zoom in on her. So we zoom into her hand. We'll go in a little bit further onto her little finger. Draw there, give her some fingernail. Now, if we zoom in further on the little finger, what we'll see if we get close enough is the building blocks of life, what every living thing is built from. That's cells. Now, within each cell, you have the most obvious feature, the nucleus. This controls the activities of the cell. So let's zoom in on that. If you look inside a nucleus, what you'll see is lots of little squiggly things. Now, these are called chromosomes. That's chromosomes, no A, and uh, they're made of DNA. You have 46 chromosomes in almost every single cell of your body. Let's zoom in on one. Chromosomes are made up of lots and lots of genes. Now, I've only drawn one gene to save myself time, but there could be a thousand there. Now, people often ask me the difference between chromosomes, genes, and DNA. Now, the quick answer is there isn't really much difference. Here's a piece of DNA. It should be about two meters long and a lot thinner, but string will do. It's made up of genes. Genes are made of DNA. This one could let you roll your tongue. This one could control your hair color. And you might have hundreds of them on each particular piece of DNA. The only difference between DNA and a chromosome is that you've coiled the DNA up. You'd be able to see that if I wasn't rubbish, but wait for it. There you go. So, coiled up DNA is called a chromosome, and you can still see the genes. It's still DNA. There are still genes. It's just been coiled up into a chromosome. So there you have it. A long strand of DNA is built up of lots and lots of individual genes. If you coil it up, you get a chromosome. That's all there is to say. Now, that's the big picture. Hit spacebar to pause and make sure you understand this before we move on. Now, the most basic form of cloning is mitosis. This is absolutely vital whenever you need more cells. This is something that happens for every single living thing on planet Earth. If you're a unicellular organism, that is, you only have one cell, for example, a bacterium, you need it to reproduce, make more of you. If you're a multicellular organism, well, let's take this adult turtle. He wasn't always so big. He used to be a little baby turtle. So he had to grow, and that needs new cells. So growth. Finally, let's say this is your arm. Now, that looked pretty painful. You're going to have to repair the damaged tissue, and again, that's going to need more cells. So the three things, reproduction for unicellular, growth for multicellular, and repair for multicellular. At its most simple, mitosis is taking one cell and making it into two genetically identical cells. They're all cell A. They're all exactly the same. That is mitosis. Here's a quick animation I've made to show how it works. First of all, I've only shown two chromosomes because it would take me ages to do 46, but there should be 46 there. Their first stage is replication. This gives us 92, and you can see they're in pairs. These pairs are identical. Those identical pairs will line up on the equator with one of each pair on either side. The equator is just a bit in the middle. There's nothing else special about it. Now, from the sides of the cell, the poles, spindle fibers will come out. These will grab one from each pair and pull them apart. This means that we now have a full set of the original genetic information at each side of the cell, which means that it is ready to divide. Now, that leaves us with two cells, a little bit small, they still need to grow, but genetically they are identical to the cell we started with. This is an example of cloning happening in your body and in everything else every day. Here's a summary. Hit the spacebar, copy it, and learn it. But if mitosis gives identical offspring, then how can evolution happen? Well, here we are inside you, and here's some of the food you've eaten. But what's this? He's a bacterium. Plural is bacteria, and you've managed to eat three of them. Now, we know they reproduce through mitosis, so here are their identical copies. But a mistake has been made copying a particular gene, and we now have a new strain of bacterium. It has an advantage. Antibiotics only work on the original, so three of the originals will die. Now they'll reproduce using mitosis, doubling up normally without any mistakes this time, but you're still taking antibiotics, so three of the blues are killed. They'll reproduce again through mitosis, and now, finally, the last round of blues will be wiped out by the antibiotics. So we're left only with the new strain. This has been a very slight change, but over a number of generations, a series of changes like this is what will give you a new species, and that is evolution.
Here's a quick summary of how natural selection leads to evolution. You know the drill by now. Hit spacebar, write it, and learn it. Nature uses cloning on a larger scale all the time. For example, asexual reproduction of daffodils. The bulbs are literally clones by the daffodils. But here's my year 13. Hello. Now they're quite a varied bunch, but why aren't we clones? Let's clone Rebecca and see what happens. We can make Rebecca's army of clones through fusion cell cloning. We take an egg cell from a donor and remove the nucleus. We then replace that DNA with DNA from one of Rebecca's body cells. We fuse it with electric shock, put it in the womb of a surrogate mother and wait for nine months. And then, hey presto, a baby Rebecca will be born with identical genetic information. Now repeat this a few times and you can replace everybody with cloned Rebecca's. But what about when that rare and mysterious blonde girl killing disease comes along? Rebecca's vulnerable and that's the end of the human race. If we'd had a little more variety, we'd have survived. Maybe we should leave cloning to the daffodils. A 15 second summary. First, we saw the big picture, genes, DNA, chromosomes, how they work. Next, mitosis, that's cellular level cloning. Next, we saw natural selection and evolution with some bacteria. And finally, cloning and why it's probably not for us. I hope you enjoyed and maybe learned something from this whirlwind tour. And I look forward to seeing you next time we do some excellent biology. Oh, <laughs> my